All right, guys. So in order to configure DHCP on the server, we're going to have to add a roller feature. So we're going to go into server manager to do that. Here's a pro tip for you guys when you're working with servers. If you don't want server manager to pop up every time you log in, just go to manage, go to server manager properties and say do not start server manager automatically on login. If you're in and out of servers all day, you're not gonna wanna see this pop up every single time, I promise. All right, so now we're gonna do, we're gonna add a roller feature. Next, next. This is the only server we have. We can manage multiple servers from one, but this is our only one in this case. And then we're gonna add DHCP server. Okay guys, this is obviously a lab environment, but you could easily have multiple servers and then you could create um, DHCP failover so you have highly available DHCP scopes if that's of interest to you guys let me know I can walk you through that it's very straightforward you just have to have two servers All right, we'll go ahead and get that installed I'll pause and come back when this is done alright guys that install has completed Go ahead and click on complete DHCP configuration. We're going to use the following credentials. That's fine because this is a domain admin. And this is just basically authorizing the DHCP server in Active Directory. Creating the security groups, authorizing DHCP server, done and done. We can close that out. We can close this out. Now we should have a RSAT, not an RSAT, we should have an actual um, administrative tool for DHCP at this point. Let's go ahead and open that up. And we're going to want to create a new scope. I'm going to do one for our VLAN 20, 10.20.10.10.0, .10 that'll be a slash 24, because that's how we configured it on the router, a slash 24. All right, guys. We're going to do a new scope. We're going to call this VLAN 20. And you can have your own standards here, guys, but I normally will carve out a block and exclude that from the lease scope or the um, range of distribution for the scope and what I mean by that is the addresses that the scope is able to hand out it just depends on what your needs are but there's you know there are times still in this day and age where you need static IPs so I'll carve out you know the first 20 or the last 20 however you guys want to do it in this case I'm gonna do the last 20 because our router is dot one I'm sorry I'm gonna do the first 20 because our router is dot one and that automatically takes it out of that range and again, guys, that way we have some uh, some statics. If someone, a vendor comes in and needs a static or something like that, they're there. So what we'll do is we'll configure 10.20.10.21 to be the start. And we'll say you can go ahead and hand out all the way to 10.20.10.254. 255 obviously being the broadcast address there. That's a slash 24. And that'll automatically fill in the mask. Next. So here's where you can add in some exclusions. We don't need any in this case. Again, there's different ways to do it, guys. You can set your distribution range up for the whole slash 24, and then you can make exclusions here. It, it just depends on what you're doing. There are scenarios where the right thing to do is set an exclusion. That's more when you're migrating and you have some old uh, reservations that would fall outside of the range of your uh, distribution if you were going to carve out. I think I'm getting in too deep here, guys. In our case, we don't need any exclusions. Okay, standard lease time of eight days is fine with me. I want to configure the standard options now for DHCP. Yes, I do. And we're going to set our router here, guys. So this is going to tell the clients, hey, this is your default gateway when you obtain an address from me. So obviously in this case, we're going to look at our topology, guys. VLAN 20, 
correlates to our fast ethernet 1/0.20 sub interface and that router ip for that sub interface is 10.20.10.1 so obviously we need to put that in here it's the only router we've got that's fine parent domain looks good dns servers we're going to go ahead and remove these and we're going to put in 10.10.10.100 for our DNS server, which is our D8, or I'm sorry, which is our, well, it is our DHCP server, also our domain controller in this case. Next. Win server. If you guys are using wins, it's going to be the same as your DNS server. Um, we can plug that in. I don't think I'll be using any uh, NetBio. Uh, we can use NetBio's names. That's fine. Again, depends on what you're doing here. Obviously, this is a lab, guys, so it's not going to hurt. Oops, I don't think I added that. There we go. Matter of fact, did I add? I didn't add the DNS server there either. There we go. Make sure you click Add, guys. I just went back and verified that. Okay, do you want to activate the scope? Yes, because you can create a scope and leave it unactive. Um, only time you really do that is if you're preparing for something, maybe you have to get change control to activate it, or maybe you're migrating and you're just doing the prep, uh, preparation work ahead of time, you can leave things unactive. In this case, we're gonna activate the scope right away. Finish. All right, guys, there we go. We've got our first active DHCP scope built on the DHCP server. Not too bad. Okay, guys, so the next thing we need to do is we're going to set this guy to DHCP, but if we do it right now, the broadcast packets, because let me take a step back. When you ask for a DHCP address, you go through a process that I call DORA, and that is the series of events that happens to acquire a DHCP address. So D-O-R-A, it's a discover from the client, he sends out a discover broadcast packet. He says, hey man, who's got DHCP, hook me up. The DHCP server, if that broadcast packet can make it to the DHCP server, will offer an address if he has one available. Then the client will receive that offer. He'll say, looks good to me, I'm gonna request. So we did our D-O-R, right? Our discover, our offer, our request and then he'll send that request packet back to the DHCP server and then the DHCP server will say I acknowledge you you can have the address we're good alright so then he has an address so again guys that's Dora like Dora the Explorer backpack backpack you know if you have kids you know <laughs> anyways yeah so that's the process the reason I bring that up is because this is a router right by default routers will drop broadcast packets that's their job they separate or segregate broadcast domains. If they were on the same subnet, the broadcast would traverse and hit that no problem. These are on different subnets, different VLANs. So what we need to do is tell that router, hey, we know this guy, he's cool, help us get to him, okay? And I'll show you what I mean. Let me crack open the console here. So what we have to do, I was already kind of prepping, but I didn't hit the command there so I can show it to you guys. We need to go to the interface where we're actually going to configure that. In this case, it's going to be the sub interface. So I'm already in config mode, but I'll back out. So comp t interface fast 1 slash 0 dot 20. So that's the sub interface for VLAN 20, which is where we're going to set up the DHCP helper. So we'll get into configuration mode for the excuse me for the interface, and then we need to do an IP helper, IP helper dash address, and then put in the address of the DHCP server. There you go. Save your config. Always save your config. Okay, so now if we go back that command should have allowed the broadcast packets to traverse the router and forward over to this VLAN or this subnet. So now let's go back to our Windows 10 and let's see if we can set up DHCP and successfully acquire an address. 
change adapter settings, properties, IPv4, properties, obtain automatically, obtain automatically. Let's see what happens. Well, that was rather uh, non-suspenseful there. It was pretty quick, but let's see if it worked. Boom, just like that, guys. 10.20.10.21. And you'll notice that he got 21 because when we set up our pool, our DHCP distribution pool, the first address that we were allowed to hand out was 10.20.10.21. So if we look at our lease, we go to all, excuse me, lease obtained just now, it's early in the morning, couldn't sleep on this Saturday morning here, and the lease expires eight days from now. <coughs> all right, guys, so that is how you set up DHCP and how you allow the DHCP request to forward through a router, because again, guys, <clears throat> excuse me by default those DHCP requests are going to be dropped at the router because what does a router do by default it drops broadcast packets it separates or segregates uh, broadcast domains that's one of its many jobs so we added the helper address to the interface that correlates to the VLAN or the subnet where we're trying to obtain DHCP after doing that we were able to successfully obtain a DHCP address from the domain um, from the DHCP server which in this case is also the domain controller one last thing I'll show you guys is since we're marking our um, IPs here I'll go ahead and change this but this is dynamic so if we were to shut it off and fire it back up a few days later after that lease expires in this lab we'll probably get the same address because there's no one else using that VLAN right now but in the real world, if you wanted to maintain the same address, we would do what you call a DHCP reservation. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so we're going to say DHCP reserve because we're about to do that right now. Let me show you what I mean. So back on your domain controller, which is also again our DHCP server, we're going to go to the scope that we created. We're going to look at our leases. This is the only lease we have. We're going to right click and we're going to say add to reservation. Lease converted successfully to reservation. So what does that mean? That means every time this machine checks in with DHCP, he's always going to get this same address. And it also means when any other clients check in on that same subnet on this scope, they will not be able to obtain that address because it's already reserved for this guy. So it's kind of like a reserved seat. You're always going to sit in that same spot and no one else is allowed to sit there. 